continuing with quantum theory and the electronic structure of atom, we will uh, learn some more about the electronic configurations. And in this video, you are going to deal with ions and some special cases. And uh, before we start, we will just devise on the basis of electronic configuration. So let's uh, learn about some of the rules that has to be followed in order to fill in the electrons. The first one is the Arthur principle and according to this, the lower energy orbitals are filled first. The figure on the right hand side uh, tells us uh, how, how the energies are arranged and the order in which it has to be filled in. So if you, uh, based on that, it's clear that we fill in the, uh, the electrons in the order of 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p and once you reach 3p, you realize that it is 4s which is uh, lower energy uh, than as compared to 3d. So 4s is filled first and then comes 3d, 4p, 5s, then if you follow the same thing, 4d, 5p, 6s and so on. So it is good to write down the alpha principle, alpha is uh, the picture to uh, identify which is the lower level. So based on this, if I write the electronic configuration of sodium, it has 11 electrons, It'll, uh, the electronic configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, that makes 10 electrons and one electron will be in 3s1. So the electronic configuration of chlorine will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and 3p5. And the, I've also given the electronic configuration of iron and you notice that the 4s level is filled before 3d because according to alpha principle, lower energy orbitals have to be filled in first. Uh, we have two more rules for filling in the electrons and the first, uh, the second one is the Hunt's rule. According to this, empty orbitals are filled first, pairing occurs later. For example, in case of oxygen, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p4 as the electronic configuration. So in the 1s level, first the two electrons go in and then in 2s, Again, we have two uh, electrons with the opposite spin occupy the 2s level. There was no problem with this. Now, let's go to the p um, orbitals or the p subshell and there are three um, boxes in there. So, what we do is we fill in only the empty or orbitals first and then the fourth electron pairs up only after we fill up the empty orbitals. So, the next rule is Pauli's exclusion principle. According to this, no two electrons in a single atom can have the same four quantum numbers. Or in other words, we can have n, l and m, l can be the same. But the spin quantum number has to be different uh, because we cannot have in one uh, orbital two electrons with the same spin. So for the electrons in 1s2 of oxygen, the quantum numbers are uh, uh, the n, l and m, l are all same. But the spin quantum number, one will be positive half, the other one will be negative half. So earlier we did the electronic configuration uh, using the Agbaz diagram. That's a very long method. So we should, there should be an easier method which we saw it in the last uh, video also. Like let's do the electronic configuration using the periodic table. The periodic table is given on the side. And if you want to do the electronic configuration of sodium, we just have to consider the inert gas before it, that's neon, and then count down to the blocks given over there. So we reach the S block, therefore for sodium it is neon 3s1. Similarly for phosphorus it is neon 3s2, 3p3. And uh, I've given it for iodine and uh, tellurium also. Iodine, uh, in case of iodine, the, you also know that once you reach the D block, it is 1 less than the period number. And in case of the F block, it is a 2 less than the period number. So we will be following one, uh, this method where we use the periodic table and the inner gas configuration to write the electronic configuration here onwards. There are few special cases in which the electronic configuration does not follow the rules which you have been using so far. Consider the electronic configuration of chromium 24. So based on the periodic table, the electronic configuration becomes argon 4s2 3d4. So this 
when written in the expanded form the argon remains the same and uh, we have two electrons in the s and then when i write down the uh, d subshell 1 2 3 4 5 and then start filling in the electrons i put the first electron in the first one and even for the according to hun's rule only empty orbitals are occupied first and the electronic configuration uh, looks the way i have written but there is a rule that half fill levels are more a stable or half fill orbitals are more stable than the partially filled orbitals because of that one of the electron from the s is moved on to the d uh, <coughs> subshell and the electronic configuration of chromium 24 is not 4s1 3d 4s2 3d4 instead it becomes 4s1 3d5 and we have one electron each in the s and the d orbital so this is very important that um, the electronic configuration of chromium you uh, is not 4s2 3d4 but it is 4s1 3d5 and uh, the element below chromium is molybdenum for so even for molybdenum the same rule applies half filled uh, subshells are more stable than partially filled subshells and therefore chromium molybdenum also has the electronic configuration of 5s1 4d5 and uh, uh, there is another element tungsten below it and some of them says that tungsten also follows the rule but tungsten is so far away from the nucleus it doesn't really uh, affect which way you write the electronic configuration so generally this is applied to more to chromium and molybdenum the similarly if you go further in the same d block element consider copper the electronic configuration of copper is 4s1 3d10 so if i write it in the if you have written the actual electronic configuration, they should have been 4s2, 3d9. But uh, owing to the same uh, explanation we uh, gave for chromium, one of the electron from S is pushed over to the D subshell so that uh, fully filled subshells are more stable than the partially filled subshells. Therefore, the copper's electronic configuration is 4s1, 3d10. And uh, the element below copper is silver. So, and that gets electronic configuration of krypton 5s1 4d10 so uh, in always in the exams be aware chromium molybdenum copper and silver uh, one of them shows up and since it doesn't follow the normal pattern uh, you should be very careful about them so uh, remember that in case of chromium and molybdenum it is 4s1 3d5 or 5s1 4d5 and in case of copper uh, it is 4s1 3d10 and in case of silver it is 5s1 3d10 so these four elements are very important they don't follow the normal rule now continuing with the special case let's do the electronic configuration of ions now the electronic configuration of cl minus so Cl has 17 electrons, Cl minus will have one electron extra, therefore the electronic configuration will be neon 3s2 3p6 and if you look at carefully this could be the electronic configuration of argon also. Then uh, electronic configuration of calcium uh, 2 plus, calcium 2 plus will have 18 electrons because it would have lost uh, or two electrons and there that becomes the electronic configuration of again argon and but this is also clear that all elements lose or gain electron in such a way that they get the nearest uh, inert gas and um, let's do the electronic configuration of tin in case of tin the electronic configuration is krypton 5s2 4d10 5p2 and we know when we are filling up according to Ahabha principle 5s is filled before 4d10 but when you are removing the electron 5s is outside the 4d therefore 5 electrons from 5 gets removed and uh, the rule in this case is s and p electrons are removed first and also if you look at it i have 10 electrons in the d subshell and to remove uh, 10 electrons from that 
uh, or disturb that it is going to be it needs a lot of energy and hence if I want to write the electronic configuration of tin 4 plus it will be krypton 4d10 the 2s electron and the 2p electrons are lost first the d electrons remain untouched following the same rule manganese 25 in this case also we fill in the 4s first before the 3d but when we are removing the electrons the s electrons are moved first and the manganese 2 plus has the electronic configuration of argon 3d5 then silver is also given and uh, the electronic configuration of silver the s electron is removed and uh, leaving the uh, d uh, orbital intact therefore one has to be just uh, careful even though in case of ARBA principle we will fill in the lower energy levels when you are removing the electrons or when the elements start losing the electrons or, or in some case gaining the electrons the uh, the and to form ions in case of the d uh, whenever the d is involved it is the s uh, electrons which are removed first let's do some uh, mixed example write down the electronic configuration of the following s2 minus it has got two electrons extra and that uh, will be 3s2 3px neon or i can just call it as argon gallium 31 follow the periodic table choose the inert gas and write down the rest of it and osmium is also given and uh, you see that uh, osmium can also be written as uh, though we fill in the 4f1 i have just written it in, in the way it the electron can be removed radon is given thorium is given and uh, just have a periodic table next to you in order to write down the electronic configuration so this will automatically follow the alpha principle so you don't have to worry about anything so this is a different kind of a question for the element tin how many electrons you have in ml equals minus one and how many electrons will have l equals two how many electrons will be in n equals four level and they are asking you the number of electrons that will have the value of ms equals positive half to start with let us write down the electronic configuration of tin in order to answer the question i am not writing it uh, in the inert form uh, form uh, form i am writing the expanded form and uh, the electronic configuration of tin is given to answer the first question how many electrons will have ml equals negative 1 in order to have ml the magnetic quantum number as a, or to have a value of negative 1 the value of l can be either 1, 2 or more than uh, 2 but in this case uh, since I have not gone uh, past uh, D so the value of L is only 2 so we have L equals 1 and 2 and so find out all the P L equals 1 is the P and L equals 2 is the D1 therefore find out uh, the P's and the D's and we have 2P, 3P 4p, 5p and 3d and 4d. Each one of them has uh, two electrons and uh, hence the answer is 12. Because for 3d and 4d there will be just uh, the values of ml will change from minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. So there will be just two electrons in the minus 1 level and therefore the answer is 12. Now, L, the question number 2, how many electrons will be in L equals 2? L equals 2 is possible for all the levels in which N is greater than 2 and or in a D subshell. So, L equal 2 refers to a D subshell and therefore, the, we have only two Ds there. One is a 3D, the other one is a 4D and each one of them can have 10 electrons each for the answer is 20. Now, the third question how many electrons will be in n equals 4 level this is the easier one find out uh, where does the number 4 comes it comes as at 4s2 4p6 and 4d10 and hence the answer is 18 now how many electrons will have m is equals positive half so look at the electronic configuration 
from 1s2 to 4d10. A half of the electrons will have positive half and half of the electrons will have minus half. And therefore, we have 48 electrons there and hence 24 electrons will have positive half. And 5p2, though we have two electrons there, uh, according to Hund's rule, they will be in uh, different orbitals and hence each one of them will have positive half, positive half. For the total number of electrons that will have, uh, ms equals positive half is 24 plus 2, that is equal to 20.